Tetris for the NES is one of the most popular variants of the classic block stacking game, selling over 8 million copies in its 3 decade lifespan. Over that time, the game has been continuously played at a high level, with elite players knowing the game inside and out. Feats that were thought to be nearly impossible have become trivial since the game's release. Achievements such as a max out score in level 30 were first proven to be possible by Nintendo World Champ Thor Ocarlin back in the 90s, but since then the competitive scene has snowballed into seeing who can set even more insane benchmarks for the game modes of NES Tetris. The popularization of the hyper-tabbing playstyle just a few years ago allowed for a new surge in records, with increased piece movement speeds from the technique allowing for some absurd accomplishments, such as the first 1.3 million score, a completed run on 19.5 in the B-type mode, and a then-level world record of 38 surviving 9 levels into what had previously been known as a level 29 kill screen. Just recently though, the breakthrough of a third playstyle called Rolling has allowed for a new wave of Tetris records to emerge. The technique allows for piece movement speeds upwards of nearly 30 Hz, which has allowed for high level play to improve across the board. Players are able to accomplish these speeds with a fluid motion of 5 fingers on the bottom of the controller, which when combined with the thumb pressure over the top of the D-pad allows the fingers on the bottom to translate to individual button presses for piece movement. This complicated method of influencing inputs has in turn revolutionized NES Tetris, with nearly every world record being wiped off the map in a matter of months. The HyperTap score world record of 1.4 million has been obliterated with a new 3.7 million. That level record of 38? It's now level 95. In just one year, the face of competitive NES Tetris has changed completely, and for players who have put in countless hours to master the new and overpowered technique, They've begun to set their sights towards even more ludicrous achievements, and for one player, a seemingly impossible feat was found to be viable in a surprising location. Cobalt is Pog Marbles player. Fractal 161 has been a high level classic Tetris player for several years, making the top bracket for the classic Tetris World Championships in both 2020 and 2021. Out of everyone in the competitive Tetris scene, Fractal is among the most all around grinding some of the most difficult challenge categories in the game, such as the Drought Hack ROM which distributes much fewer long bars, a piece that's crucial for the highest scoring move of a Tetris line clear. It was game modes like this that strengthened Fractal stacking and endurance abilities, which alongside piece movement speeds are crucial for competitive play at the highest levels. Once rolling was made public in April of 2021, Fractal quickly jumped on the train of players scrambling to learn the overpower technique, but like with others, he struggled early on. Fractal knew that the potential of the playstyle was worth the tedious grind, so the following months had him showing gradual signs of improvement. As the player base of new rollers began to show definite progress during the summer months, Fractal quickly followed, eventually rising to the top as one of the most proficient rollers at the time. His first world record with the playstyle backed that up, having reached 247 lines in a level 29 start in September of 2021. By the time the 2021 World Championships rolled around in October, he was ready to showcase his skills on the world stage. He showed off some dominant kill screen play, featuring piece movement speeds done with rolling that would have been unheard of just a year prior. But this is what rolling gives you. It is the fastest uh, taps per second of any technique. In the end, that advantage alone wasn't enough for him to advance, with him losing a close best of 5 match in the round of 16 to be knocked out of the tournament. From this though, a new challenge would emerge for Fractal, and while he didn't know it at the time, it would be one that would go on to reshape what he thought was possible in NES Tetris. The PAL scene is a heavily underlooked side of classic Tetris, but it too has a storied history. It's the most played version outside of the United States with a strong presence in Europe, and they have their own variation of the World Championships. Despite PAL's version of NES Tetris being almost identical on the surface when compared to NTSC, the differences between the two appear when factoring in how the respective frame rates affect the speed at which pieces fall in game. The maximum speed that a Tetramino can fall down the board is one row every frame, which works out to a duration of 0.4 seconds for PAL's 50 frames per second, but an even faster third of a second for NTSC's 60. This difference means that while NTSC's version reaches its top speed at level 29, PAL's is achieved 10 levels earlier. Because of this, you could consider PAL's level 19 to be the official dev intended kill screen, but the slight change in speed means that it is playable to some extent for every playstyle on NES Tetris. With this knowledge in mind, Fractal saw some untapped potential in the version, and when he was loaned an AVS console by community member Vandweller, his grind ultimately began. To start, there was a bit of a struggle adjusting to the difference in versions. The slight variation in frame rate between PAL and NTSC led to magnified issues at higher speeds. Having accurate taps or performing moves such as spins and tucks had Fractal a bit off rhythm, but given enough play, he was quickly able to adjust to the differences. In the span of just a few days of playing the version, he managed to take the record for the highest level reach from a PAL 19 start. 
at a mark of level 51 in 456 lines on October 26th. His progress continued at the same absurd pace, having the first 500 line game two days later, the first 600 line game on November 1st, and just two days after that, reaching an astonishing 893 lines. The score of that game was also the highest reach in any version of NES Tetris at that time. But from that point onwards, he was only focused on the line metric, realizing that he had a potentially absurd new goal that was actually within reach. To understand the goal in question, let's quickly discuss how the color system of NES Tetris works. Each level from 0 through 9 has its own color assigned to it, which is accomplished by the game checking for the ending value of a given level, following that by corresponding the given value of a level with assigned colors for the level ending 0 through 9. At level 10 and beyond, the game will repeatedly subtract 10 from any given level number until it's back to a value of less than 10. This is why levels 0, 10, and 20 have the same color scheme. Same with levels 5 and 15, 8 and 28, and so on. This system works for all intended playable levels, and even operates normally into the kill screen, as other values such as the level counter quickly begin to fail. However, this too reaches a breaking point. At level 138, the check to see if the level number is less than 10 fails, which is a product of NES Tetris using sign number representation for level values in memory, a method which uses a range of values negative 128 to 127. This means that while the math works for every level through 137, the calculation done at level 138 ends up defaulting to negative 128, which does fit the initial criteria of being less than 10. This false positive leads the game to assume that level 138 does in fact have an assigned color value, so it attempts to find 138 within the color table. One small problem though, which is that the color table entry for level 138 doesn't exist, and instead points to an entirely random portion of the game's code and this is what is visually represented in game. This happens for every value past 137, meaning that an entire sequence of bug colors emerges. This is fully explored in a video by community member Greg Boomcannon, where his AI stack rabbit managed to storm through level 138 and beyond, and I highly recommend checking that out. Greg also went out of his way to give a nickname to every level the bot encountered. My personal favorites are Squid, Aquamarine, and of course, Green. For a human player though, replicating StackRabbit's feats is just a bit tricky. With the level being at a threshold of 1,320 lines, Fractal had the realization that he was within striking distance, and with the slight advantage that PAL's version had with a slightly slower kill screen, he had a definite shot at doing what had never before been considered humanly possible. To bridge the 43 level gap though, he had to deal with the insane pitfalls that NES Tetris provides. Things as simple as a bad piece sequence can easily end a game on kill screen speeds, as well as mistakes such as snagging pieces before they can reach either side of the board, closing off crucial sections of making Fractal unable to burn lines. The wear and tear of kill screen games that were beginning to surpass 30 minutes in length at this point had proven to be incredibly challenging, but for Fractal, this was all the more reason to continue grinding. I think 1,043. Oh, <laughs> what do you think? These aren't the new colors. I was 30 lines off. Fractal was within 30 lines of reaching the bugged colors. The nerves and subsequent mental barrier proved to be difficult to overcome. So for a prolonged stretch, Fractal would continue to get 1000 line games, just for them to fizzle out in some incredibly sad ways. Playing mistake-free Tetris for upwards of 40 minutes is such a difficult task, but Fractal knew that it took just one game to break through. He had come so close, just for an unfortunate spire of long bars to end his best run. His perseverance persisted though, and while it might have taken a full 2 months from his near 1200 lines game, he would get yet another shot at redemption. Only this time, things would go a bit differently. There's not much to say about the first portion of the run, since Fractal isn't going for efficiency, instead opting for pure lineout strats. He did encounter some scary board situations early on. Uh, give me a second, I can explain, I can elaborate more. But he got out continuing to creep up the level counter. 
Fractal's ability to read the chat and play at the same time can't be understated either. You might as well just take the shower. Like I'll still be play I'll, I still I'll still be playing by the time you get back. At 900 lines though, Fractal buckles in. He asks his roommate to close the chat. Can you do the thing? It's been fun! Takes a deep breath and focuses on clearing lines. After a few more scary situations, he finds himself within 100 lines once again. Shortly after that, he surpasses his previous record, with just two levels separating him from a screen that no human players have been able to reach up to that point. He still can't let his foot off the gas, and at this point, the nerves are definitely evident. Still, Fractal would clutch up at a time when it mattered the most. Oh my god! <laughs> oh shit! Oh my god! I did not realize I'd be this happy. Neon Knights! <laughs> oh my god! It's so beautiful! Oh, uh, which one's this one? Spam 10. No, Spam 10's later. I knew this was the one. Every other time. Oh, that's a bit hard to see. Yeah! <laughs> no! After a grind spanning nearly five months, Fractal had finally done it. He was the first to play a game of NES Tetris that not only broke the level counter and score counter, but also how the game visualizes the level colors with him playing through four entirely unique color palettes. He had accomplished exactly what he intended to, and from there, he was done. Naturally, this raises several questions for the NTSC version going forwards. With it being the most popular of the two versions, it has more competition, but the extra increase in speed for the kill screen has made it much tougher to see level 138 as a feasible goal. That is, until just recently, with Eric's new score world record. In that, he accumulated a total of 895 lines, which is reminiscent of the mark that Fractal set back in October, the game where he realized that the bugged colors were actually possible on PAL. The new record in the NTSC version has prompted several rollers to grind for the accolade, and honestly, it likely isn't too far off. Now, it's just a matter of when, and how far the player can manage to storm past the unique color schemes. From there, well, there are some pitfalls to consider. Some color schemes are incredibly tough to see on a typical CRT or LCD screen. Levels like charcoal or the infamous green. These will prove to be tough for players once they reach those marks, but it goes without saying that this group of incredibly elite players will find some sort of way to get through these obstacles. Does this mean that the kill screen has truly been overcome? Well, not quite. At a certain point, the game struggles to calculate any new point score values to such an extent that it'll straight up crash the game. In Greg's StackRabbit video, this happened at level 237, but the level in which it crashes on doesn't appear to be fixed to a specific point. Different game cartridges such as the tournament allowed Tetris Gym Cart do have a fix for this crash, but unfortunately it also patches out the bugged colors, meaning that it might not be allowed for leaderboard accepted games that play past level 138. That's a conversation for another time though, so we'll cross that bridge when we get there. In a matter of like, 6 months, probably. Thank you so much for watching. Definitely make sure to check out Fractal, his links can be found in the description. He's beginning an entirely new challenge, where he himself made a ROM that allows the player to start on all 255 levels in the game. In the end, his goal is to obtain a max out score on each of those levels, so I'd especially recommend checking out his Twitch to watch his progress on that. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe so you can catch any future uploads. I'll see you again next time.